Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we're going to be looking at question number two for the May June 2019 CSEC Agricultural Science Single pa Single Award Paper Two. All right, we're looking at question two today. We looked at question one last time, and so today we're going to jump into question number two for the May June 2019 Single Award Paper Two for Agricultural Science CSEC. All right, so you know what to do before we jump into it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you know when Learn SKN drops another video. All right, question two. Define the term value chain. Define the term value chain. And so we're going to jump to our textbook to define the term value chain, right? So value chain. The value chain refers to the process in which a business receives raw materials adds value to them through production, manufacturing, and other processes to create a finished product and then sell the, the finished product to the consumer. So that's the value chain right there. As the name suggests, it's a chain and each successive step tends to add value to that product, right? The steps are supposed to add value to each product. So the value chain refers to the process of you getting raw materials, then you process them, they add value to them, to production, manufacturing, and other processes to create a finished product and then sells the finished product to the consumer. So the value chain is all the steps involved in processing a raw material into a finished product and getting that product in the hand of the final consumer. That's it, the value chain. So it's all the steps that are taken that gets raw material, turn raw material into a finished product and get that into the hand of the final customer. All the steps along the line, that's the value chain, right? The value chain. Good. That's the value chain in a nutshell. And then they ask, state one major difference between supply chain and value chain. Supply chain and value chain. And then we have the supply chain right here. A supply chain is a network of all individuals, organizations, resources, activities, and technologies involved in the creation and sale of a product. Every step in the process, including creating a good or service, manufacturing it, transporting it to a place of sale and selling it is a part of a company's supply chain. Right? So you see a difference right there. So the value chain is all about that particular product right the product it's a product centric it's product centric the value chain adding to the product the supply chain is a network of all individuals organizations resources and activities and technology involved in the creation and sale of the product of a product so whereas the value chain is focusing on the product the supply chain is everything that is around that product everything that's around that product that focus on the sale of that product and every step in that process. So you can very well say the, 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 the value chain is more product centric, right? Whereas the supply chain is more, let's say, services centric in a sense, if you want to put it like that. So let's jump to a definition here on Investopia, Investopedia, right? A very good source for business information. So value chain versus supply chain, an overview. The term value chain refers to the process in which businesses receive raw materials and value add value to them through production, manufacturing, and other processes to create a finished product. So like I said, the product. Then sell the finished product to the customer, the consumer. The supply chain now represents the steps it takes to get the product or service to the customer. So it's services and everything involved in getting the product that has been created to the customer now. Right, so like I said before, the value chain was about the product, getting the product add value to the product. Now the supply chain is getting that product now to the rightful person. The steps involved in getting the product itself to the rightful, the final, the final consumer. So the supply chain represents the steps it takes to get the product or service to the customer. Often, when dealing with OEMs and aftermarket parts, well, that's like, that's just for cars and stuff like that. Right. So again. Value chain is about adding value to all the steps involved in adding value to that product. Supply chain is the steps involved getting that product to the final customer. All right? 
Good. Moving right along. So that's a major difference right there. All right. B. Farmers in Mount Dew, <laughs> Mount Dew, Mount Dew, have been the only suppliers of yam in an area for over 10 years. Recently, they have been complaining that the price of their yams have been reduced by 50% over the past year. So there's three reasons why the reduction in the price, so just three reasons for a reduction in the price of yams. Okay, good. So again, application. This is an application question again. So let's go again. Farmers in Mount Dew have been the only suppliers of yam in the area for over 10 years. Recently, they have been complaining that the price of their yams have been reduced by 50% over the past year. So there's three reasons why the reduction in the price of yams. Good. So let's go. One, obvious one. Supply and demand, right? The demand for yam drop. Nobody wants any yam anymore. So therefore, there's too much on the market. The demand is not there. And so the price of the yam will drop. Simple as that. Demand for yam gone down. Nobody will eat in yam. And so the price of yam would drop. That's one main reason, what reason why there's a reduction in the price of yam. So apart from the, the demand for yam itself falling and people, you know, demanding less yam, you can also have the price of something similar to yam going down. For example, perhaps the price of sweet potatoes fall, right? And if the price of sweet, sweet potato goes down, people are going to say, okay, I'm going to uh, maybe Dashina, or Tanya, or Edo, whichever one, ground provision. But if it's something that yam can be substituted for, then the cost, if the price of that substitute goes down, then the demand for that substitute goes up because the price gone down. Remember, looking at supply and demand right there. This is testing all about supply and demand, market price, and that kind of thing for agriculture. The market, the, this business part of, of agriculture. So if the supply, if the, if the cost of potato goes down, then the demand for yam will fall. And if the demand for yam fall, the price of yam goes down also. Good. That's the next reason. Also, they say that they have been the only supplier of yam in the area for over 10 years. Who says so? Who told them that? Right? So maybe one reason why the price of yam going down now is because there are more suppliers. They, they might not know that. But maybe there are more suppliers on the market. And if there are more suppliers on the market, then the cost of the, the price of the good would go down. So those are three scenarios you can see where they can cause reduction in the price of yams. Again, one, the demand for yam itself gone down. Nobody really want yam anymore, so the price goes down. Two, the demand, the the price for another product similar to yam, like potato or dashi or elo or tan or whatever, gone down, and so persons buying more of that, and so they're gonna buy less of yam, and so the demand for yam goes down and the price goes down. Or uh, three, the supply for yam goes up, as in somebody supplying more yam in the area besides them and so if the supply goes up then the price of yam would also come down so all those are ways in which the you can see reasons why there will be a reduction in the price of yam and also of course maybe they just want to clear the market you know there's a glut on the market again they got to do with supply and demand and so that's another reason right there so those are three scenarios you can think of to reduce the price in yam and of course, you can jump in agriculture science book and you can look at pricing and you can look at, you see, an increase in demand tends to increase the price and increase supply. But, you know, so if there's a decrease in demand, as I said before, there has the opposite effect resulting in a lower price of and quantity supplied. So reducing demand and increasing supply again tend to lower the price. So increasing supply must have lowered the price. Right, so all those are things we're looking at here for the law of supply and demand. Right? Also, let's not let's not let's not let's not take out something else. The government could be involved also. Because the government could set maybe a ceiling or floor price, whichever one you want to look at, a floor price for for yam and say that the price of yam cannot go below this, and that happened to be half of what it was before. So there's that, that scenario also where the government might set the price of yam below what it was before. And so that can cause a reduction in the price of yam also. The government stepping in and price controlling 
for yam. Okay, good. Moving right along. So just one way in which farmer, the farmers of Mount you could get better prices for their yam. How can they get better prices for their yam? And as I just said right now, so I just said just now, supply and demand, right? Supply and demand. So if you find the price of your yam too low, then don't produce as much. And so if you reduce the supply of the yam, the price of the yam should go back up. Because if it's too much out there, there's a glut, the price going down. But if you reduce the amount of yam you're producing, then your prices should go up. Right? So that's one way in which you can get better prices for your yam. Also, of course, seek another outlet. Instead of sticking to instead of sticking to the same area, go and find a next person, a next market, expand your market, and you might be able to get a higher price for your yam. So you might want to export, you might want to venture outwards to a next market, and you can get a higher price for your yam. So that's two ways in which you can increase the get a better price for your yams. Right? Good. Next one, last one for this question. Question two. Suraj is unemployed and wants to start rearing livestock to earn an income, even though he has never reared livestock before. Suraj has no land on which to establish his livestock farm. He has identified a nearby plot of land belonging to his neighbor who lives overseas, which he can use to rear his livestock. Suraj has not determined the size of his operation, the cost or type of livestock he wants to rear. He is advised by his friend to visit the agriculture development bank to apply for a loan to purchase the livestock. Considering the scenario above, advise Suraj of three challenges that he may encounter in trying to obtain a loan. Okay, so financing his efforts. What challenges, challenges he might face. And so if you jump to our textbook again, we're looking at how to obtain a loan, right? And so some difficulties he might run into. Now, let's say to obtain a loan from a reliable financial institution, farmers need, a full, need to fulfill certain requirements. See figure 17.2 and it's right there, right? So they have to have, so to get the loan, you must have credit worthiness, farm proposal, budget estimates, farm records and experience, collateral security guarantee, credit rating, lifestyle and character, Farmer's registration. And let's look at Suraj right here. Look at this. Look at this. No land. Right? So here's the problem here. He has not determined the size of operation, the cost, or type of livestock he wants to rear. So, I mean, he has nothing really. So when it comes around uh, budget estimates, that's going to be a problem because he cannot estimate based on and not knowing. So if you come down here to where they have budget estimates, the farm proposal outlines the farmer's intentions and details the enterprise details the enterprise the farmer proposes, the farming technique, the resources needed, and the anticipation anticipated output and income. Now, if he doesn't have a farm proposal, who gonna lend him money? So he's not gonna get a loan easily without a proper farm proposal because you need to know what you are about, you need to know what, is, what you're going to do. And so you, that is a non-starter, right? So that's a problem right there. Then budget estimates. Because everything tied together, eh? using the farm proposal, the farm prepares and submit a budget estimate. Now, how could he estimate if there's no farm proposal and he has no idea what he's doing? So of course, the bank and watch him and say like, yo, dude, I can't give you money. Don't know what your budget is. Don't know what you're proposing. Don't know what, how, what, what money I'm going to expect. Don't know when I'm going to get paid. And things like that. And of course, look at this. Farm records and experience. Now, the bank would want to see a track record. They want to see that you can repay the money if we lend you. But this dude is new. He's fresh. There's no, there are no farm records. He don't even own the land. There's little to no experience. And so therefore, he's going to have some problems obtaining the loan because he look at that he don't know the, the size of the operation the cost the type he wants to rear nothing so again problems right there but then one of the ultimate problems he's going to have is in securing the loan is collateral and security collateral 
financial institutions make sure that the farmer has some form of collateral or security to offer that will cover the total amount of the loan should the farmer not be able to repay the money. This may be in the form of property, for example, land. And clearly, dude state right here, he has no land. So there, there's no asset there. So how, how would the, 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 the bank lend him money without knowing how they're gonna get the money back in return? So if you look at all of these things, you can easily boil down the challenges he's gonna face. No experience, that's one. No collateral, we can't learn nothing, that's two. No proposal, that's three. No records, that's four. So, I mean, he's in a bad way about it. He not, might not even get that loan, all right? So that's gonna be problematic for him anywhere you twist or turn it, right? So you outline three, and you're good to go. That's three easy max. All right, so that's it for question number two for the May, June 2019 CSEC Single Award Agricultural Science Paper 2. All right, so that's it for now. So you know what to do again? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for when Learn SKN drops the rest of quest the questions from May, June 2020, 2019 for the Agricultural Science CSEC Paper 2 Single Award Paper. All right, thanks for watching, thanks for listening.